Now in this video, we're going to be demonstrating how polymorphism and dynamic binding actually works. Now, the idea with polymorphism and dynamic binding is we don't actually know the exact type of, a met of an object until the program actually runs. We don't know it at compile time. Um, what this means is that the, when we have some code, the specific method that gets called, say we have two objects that are of uh, extend from the same subclass, so they're part of the same hierarchy. Um, suppose that we have a variable that instances that stores the superclass. However, really what it's storing is the subclass, um, and the method that we call doesn't actually, we don't actually know that until the program runs. Now that sounded a bit confusing, but this video will clear it up really well. So what we're going to do in this video is create um, a couple of very simple classes. Uh, the first one we're going to have is um, a person. So person. This is going to be our superclass um, here. Now, from superclass, we're going to have, from the superclass person, we're going to have a class called student. And we're also going to have a graduate student, which extends from student. So this is what our class hierarchy is going to look like. We've got person, which is the base class. We have student, which is the which is a subclass, and then we have a further subclass for grad student. Now, all of these methods are going to have sorry, all of these classes are going to have a two-string method. Um, person is going to have actually person's going to have a default two-string method, and student is going to ex, uh, override that with its own version. And then finally, grad student isn't going to have its own, it's going to use the one that was in students. Now the idea here is that when we're writing our program, the, we don't actually know, well we probably do, but the compiler doesn't know um, exactly what type of object we're going to have here, whether it's going to be a person, a student or a grad student. What that means is that when if we call a, the toString method, the actual method that gets called um, will only be found out at runtime. So this is an example of dynamic binding. Static binding means it's decided at compile time. Dynamic binding means it's decided at runtime. Um, and so with that, why don't we code this up now to see it working. So I've created a new uh, project called dynamic binding and to this I'm going to add a new class and what we'll call this is dynamic binding demo dynamic binding demo oops no spaces all right now the first thing we're going to do is create our tiny hu class hierarchy so first one is going to be um, person so class person um, and what we're actually going to do here is extends object. Now, we don't necessarily have to do this because by default, every class that we write in Java extends from object. I'm typing this here so it's explicit and we can see that that is exactly what's going on. So public string to string return person. Okay, next we're going to have our student class, so class student extends person, public string to string, return student. And then finally our graduate student, so class graduate student extends student and we're not going to have anything in here it's just going to be an empty class all right so now inside our dynamic binding demo we're going to have a method and we're just going to call this m so public static void m now this is going to take a parameter and it's just going to be an object 
we don't know what type of object. It's, um, it's just going to be an object, and we'll call this x. And what we're going to do in here is print out the toString method of that object. So system dot out dot print line x dot oops x dot toString. So an object. So that means that we could have any type of object in here, and our method will accept it. And all it has to do is print out the toString method. Now, we're going to have a main method, so public static void main string array args. Now, the first thing we're going to do is have an object variable called o, but we're going to create a new graduate student. Now, we can do this um, as... So we haven't actually specified graduate student O equals new graduate student here. We've said we're going to have an object. What this means is that this variable O can store a reference to any object that extends from this here. So if we had um, person here, that would also work. As long as graduate, as long as the class, that, sorry, as long as the object type we're creating is a subclass of what we said the variable was going to store. So having an object here works fine. Next thing we're going to do is have another object. O1 equals new object. So just the base object class. Now, what we're going to do ha here is see what type um, of object we actually have. So if O1, now this is a very special keyword in Java. It's called instance of, and then we have a class name. What this is saying is even though that we're only storing an object, even though our variable type is only an object, we can actually find out the real type of a object that we have here using the instance of method. So what we're going to do here is system.out.println never got here graduate student yes because now we're going to typecast graduate student by one all right so the idea here oops i've done my cast wrong the idea here is that this will never be called because the variable O1 is actually storing an object, not a graduate student. Um, if we change this to O, even though the variable O says we're storing an object, we know that what, is that what it is actually referencing is a graduate student. So O is an instance of graduate student, so this piece of code would be executed. But for now, let's just leave it for O1. Next thing we're going to do is call the variable, sorry, call the method M with O as a parameter. Now we're going to uh, m new student m new person m new object. So we're going to print out the two string methods. Um, so with that, let's run this now. Once I've fixed my typo, oops, control save. All right, and let's see what happens. So run, actually, I'll just bring this back so we can see this. Run as Java application. Okay, so what happened here? Well, the first thing we did was we this never got executed because I said it wouldn't because O1 is an object, not a graduate student. So what we did, we called M on the variable O. Now, we've said that the variable here stores an object, although we've assigned an act, actually assigned a graduate student to that. Now what this means is the compiler doesn't know uh, what type of object we're going to have here. It decides at runtime. But because graduates, because we're actually stu storing a graduate student here, we call the graduate student's toString method. Now we haven't actually put one into graduate student, which means it inherits it from its superclass, which is student, which is why it printed out student here. Uh, we created a student object and called M. Now that printed out student, no surprise there. Uh, we created a person, and it printed out the person toString method. 
we create an object and it printed out this. This happens to be the default um, toString method for all objects unless we specify our own. So that's what we got here. Now just quickly, um, I just want to show you something. If we change this to O, O stores a graduate student, we know that. O is an instance of graduate student, which means this code will execute. So let's see what happens. Um, run. Uh-oh. Now, never got here printed, which is because O is an instance of graduate student. However, then our program crashed because we tried to typecast O1, which is a type of object, to a graduate student, which it can't do. We can only do this um, if we know that the type is going to be correct. So that's why our program crashed with a class cast, a dynam, sorry, a class class, class cast exception. I can speak this morning, I swear. So that's just something to keep in mind what instance of actually does. But if we put that back to how it was, we get some sane output. So really, that's it for this video. So just to summarize now, we created two, four, we, sorry, we created four types of objects. Now each class implemented a two-string method, and we passed these methods to an object. Now, method accepted an object type as its parameter. The actual type we passed in wasn't known until runtime. So that's what dynamic binding is all about, delaying decisions until the program runs. So with that, that's it for this video. Thanks a lot.